Glycemic index, what's that all about anyway? I've heard that term thrown around quite a bit uh, before I really got into RX Healthy Habits. I'd hear that word and I really didn't understand it too much. But the more I started to learn about weight management, but also just uh, overall health, this number, this, this term kept coming up. Uh, glycemic index or glycemic control and most people that think about glycemic they think about okay that's diabetes no we're going to talk about how this is an important thing to kind of get a handle on because your food choices uh, should include obviously a balanced diet okay I get that but our healthy habits we like to also explain to people that while you want to eat a balanced diet you want to avoid certain food groups or minimize how much you get from certain food groups never want to eliminate a food group but if you eat too much of one, uh, especially high glycemic foods, we're going to talk about how that can be a problem. What is glycemic index? Real simply, that measures how quickly foods raise your blood sugar levels. So foods with a high uh, glycemic index, or GI, they're going to cause a more rapid increase in your blood sugar levels. Now, uh, obviously things with lower glycemic index would not spike those as much. Why is that significant? Well, it's pretty simple. If you sustain... High, higher blood sugars you know continually what that's going to do it's going to increase the chances of uh, weight gain uh, if you're a, t a pre-diabetic it's really going to raise some havoc and probably cause some insulin uh, desensitivity where your cells are going to become not as sensitive anymore for insulin which is bad and you could end up developing type 2 diabetes uh, if you continue to eat high glycemic foods uh, but also they've shown that even cholesterol levels uh, when you do your lipid panel if you eat high glycemic foods, that might affect that. And overall, of course, uh, as you gain weight and as you have some of these things happen, and it's a constellation of things that lead to heart disease. So glycemic foods, you really can enjoy them, high glycemic foods, obviously, but it's how much you eat and how often. And uh, I know this, there's glycemic index and there's glycemic load. So if you have a small little piece of a cake like this it's different than if you have one like this right especially if you're somebody that's a diabetic that's a huge difference they're, they're always looking at glycemic index but they're also in kind of glycemic load i don't overwhelm you a lot of things but suffice it to say that even people who do not have type 2 diabetes normal weight like myself uh, i still have to watch my glycemic index intake because it's going to lead to some problems now here's basically the way i look at it it's this if you're a normal body weight and you don't have type 1 type 2 diabetes why is the glycemic index important because if I eat a lot of highly glycemic index foods I get a little spike I never go over because I'm not diabetic over at, let's say 130 or 140 whatever but what happens is <laughs> two hours later I'm hungry again so I go to get some more food so it's kind of like the sugar rush if you want to call it or the junk food rush you know you get that initial feeling uh, that you, you got a lot of energy, but then two hours later you're like dead, especially this used to happen to me in the afternoon Couldn't figure it out for a long time. I get that crash So that was one reason so now when I look at a plate of pasta I'm saying to myself that would be great But I know that I'm gonna feel like crap in another couple hours So for me now that's the issue with glycemic foods I don't like a lot of highly glycemic foods because I think they sometimes can cause some problems now. That's again That's me, but Many people I talk to the same way. Now, you want to maintain glycemic control uh, because it's going to help you maintain your blood sugars. Uh, it's going to help you with maybe that, that up and down thing. But also, I think long term, it's a healthier way to eat. So let's go through and talk about this. Now, I'm going through all this, but in my blog, all this is detailed. There's references. There's, there's uh, links you can click on that will actually tell you the glycemic breakdown of a lot of foods that you eat. I'm not going to go through them all. But I have to talk about them and talk about the glycemic index. It goes from zero to 100. So obviously the higher the number, the higher the, the, the fact that that's a higher glycemic food. So let's talk about fruits first. Now this one surprised me. <laughs> watermelon was up there at 72 um, for a glycemic index. I love watermelon. I'm not going to stop eating it. But I said to myself, you know, if you're going to eat that fruit, you got to understand that's going to spike you a little bit. You're going to get some a little bit more of a rush of sugar there. I love watermelon. I got some in the fridge right now. I love pineapple. I eat small portions of it because I like it and because it's okay if you don't have that massive load of it, right? But also limited. Uh, mangoes are 51 to 60. Oranges are 31 to 51. Bananas are relatively low at 42. All those are on the blog. You can check it out. Vegetables. Now this is interesting. I didn't know this. Uh, you always think carrots. Well, carrots are about 41 to 60. So that varies, but carrots, they're up there. Uh, one of my favorites, butternut squash. It's good. <laughs> 
got a lot of nutrients, micronutrients, with a 72 on the scale, so that's going to, you know, it's going to spike you quite a bit for a vegetable. Uh, spinach, of course, very well, like five, right? Uh, peas, acorn squash, some of the things like that, very low. Um, no, I'm sorry, acorn squash, I'm wrong. That's pretty high, 55. Cauliflower, broccoli, very low. So some of these make sense to you because when you eat them, sometimes you can tell, right? Starches, typically very high index. Now we're talking about white rice, pasta, right? Don't eat it too much, but when I do, I know that that's going to be a higher one. White bread, uh, have a weak spot for that. Can't eat a lot of it, uh, but I can have some, but same thing. That's going to spike. This is crazy. Ready? Cornflakes, 80 to 85 glycemic index. Can you believe that? Uh, brown rice is lower, a little bit. Oatmeal is very high. Uh, wheat pasta, maybe a little better. Um, quinoa, quite low at 53. So if you want to maintain uh, good glycemic control, then you really need to concentrate on complex carbohydrates, not the highly refined sugars uh, you know, uh, and starches. You want to, as sugary drinks, very bad. Processed foods, usually very bad. They usually spike it really quickly, especially you know, highly processed starches, potato chips, things like that. Um, so you want to go with things that are lower GI, and that's going to be uh, glycemic index. Non-starchy vegetables, nuts, seeds, uh, legumes, whole grains, right? That's going to help a little bit. Now, one of the things you want to think about is we don't easily, usually eat just, uh, you know, fruits or vegetables. We usually have a starch. Okay, I get that. But protein. Sometimes when you do protein in combination with these things, and you do the typical plate, right, where you got half is your vegetable, uh, this much is the starch and this much is the protein. Good way to eat, right? So amount of protein in your diet is going to have a big impact on, uh, on your overall health because the more protein, a lot of times, very often you can reduce your hunger for some of these uh, high glycemic foods. Fiber, very important. That's why vegetables usually have a lot of fiber in them. That's very important, but also that feeling of fullness so you're not going after some of the high glycemic foods. Key. Now, here's the other thing. You can get away with some high glycemic foods, uh, especially if you're doing exercise, because your muscles are looking to burn uh, glucose. They're looking to burn energy. Now, they store it. If you eat a lot of high carbohydrates, here's what's going to happen. It's going to go into storage in your liver. It's going to go into storage in your muscles in the form of glycogen. Your pancreas, when it fires out insulin, that helps cells absorb the glucose. When your pancreas says, oh, we don't have enough glucose, this kid is exercising like a maniac, it fires out glycogen, which breaks down some of the stores in the muscles and in the liver, so it's available in your bloodstream to be absorbed in the cells so that you can fuel your body. It's a very amazing process. And when that gets thrown out of kilter, um, a lot of bad things happen, so exercise. Absolutely. You know, you notice you, you, there's a little bit more forgiving with sweets if you're going out to burn it right away, but there's reason there. There's some balance there. Uh, here's some final tips. If you really want to get a handle on, on you know, control glycemic index and really start to think about really focusing on a balanced diet of protein, carbs, and fats. Uh, on our program, we have for weight loss, we usually have a limited amount of carbohydrates. Uh, we never eliminate a food group, but the point is, is usually to lose weight, that's one of the things we look at is keeping very much lower than the typical American diet. The right carbohydrates, that's number two. You want to choose the right ones. So you want to go with more, not processed, highly refined. You want to go with more whole, uh, complex carbohydrates, uh, non starchy vegetables, etc. So that's so important. Always want to incorporate the protein into your diet, especially in your meals. It's never good to eat just glycemic foods, like high glycemic foods alone, vegetables alone, protein alone. It's nice to kind of combine that. Regular exercise, we just talked about that. Extremely important. So I would suggest you work with your healthcare provider, especially if you're circling the drain for diabetes, you're pre-diabetic, and he's been talking about this, then you really need to work with your provider and say, how do I stay out of the weeds here? What are some things I can do? And, and probably a topic's gonna be some of your glycemic index or your carbohydrate intake. Make small changes, always important. But understand this, and I'll leave you with this. Really, when it comes to glycemic foods, you really gotta take a look at it and say to yourself, how do I feel after I eat them? And I know this, I know that when I do not have a lot of excessive amounts and uh, quantities of high glycemic foods, I feel better. But small amounts, once in a while, are usually some of the indulgences that I like. And because they're more complex, if they're lower glycemic, not really high, it's better than me grabbing and having a cupcake, better than me grabbing and having a bagel, <laughs> right? 
because I still could get that satisfaction, that craving fulfilled without the high glycemic, without spiking blood sugar. So hope that video helps. And again, come to our blog, a lot of information embedded. And as always, jump on rxhealthyhabits.com so you can stay in the loop with all the new uh, information coming down. Get on our weekly email. Our weekly email comes out once a week and it always has embedded content that's going to really help you on your journey. So until next video podcast, stay healthy, stay away from glycemic and night foods, and get out there and, and move your body, get some exercise because nothing tastes as good as healthy feels.